I wonder what kind of videos other data engineers make on YouTube. Let's look. Wait, three reasons not to become a data engineer. What about reasons to do it? That does beg the question, should you become a data engineer? What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogashaw, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're gonna to talk about why you should become a data engineer. It seems like recently a plethora of new articles discussing the fact that possibly data engineering is going to overtake data science have been coming out more frequently. And when I talk to other data engineering consultants, as well as data engineers, they're all kind of getting excited because they seem to feel like data engineering is possibly getting a little bit of spotlight. I just have one word for all you guys, chill. Data engineering is not becoming more relevant. It has always been, and probably will be for a while, relevant. The funny thing is, it took me a few seconds to find articles discussing the importance of data engineering back from 2017. In fact, both CapTech and Forrester discussed the importance of data engineering and how it might even be perceived more important than data science in the future. Now, I don't necessarily think one is more important than the other. I think it is definitely a chicken and egg problem where you need to get your data first before you can really do any form of data science. But now let's focus on the meat and potatoes for this video and answer the question, should you become a data engineer? To answer this question, let's break this down to pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros first. Pro, salary. If you're somewhere like the Bay or Seattle, you're likely to make upwards of 100K base before even looking at things like stocks and bonuses as a data engineer. Now that might require one or two years of experience, but it's a pretty good salary. And once you have that one to two to three years of experience, you're also likely to make a lot more just because of how much you can be making from stock perspectives, especially if you're working at a company whose stock is continually going up, which we all know stocks can only go up. Quick pause. If you're currently enjoying this video, take a moment to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. It really does mean a lot to me and encourages me to keep making these videos. I really do appreciate your time. And now let's get back to the video. Next, job security. Now, if you actually watch the video on why not to become a data engineer by Carolina, she discusses the fact that there are a lot of tooling coming in place that will likely replace data engineering in the next few years. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not saying it's not possible. Yes, there are a lot of tools like Denodo and automated connectors like Fivetran and other tooling that are attempting to simplify data engineering. But there are two things that I think will combat these new tooling, starting out with data sources. The number of data sources that companies are trying to integrate into their various systems is growing by the day. Regardless of how much data engineers try to manage all of this, it just becomes more and more complex and takes a lot of time to just integrate all those systems even if you have things like automated connectors, you will still need to spend a decent amount of time modeling your data, cleaning up your data, and making sure it's correctly integrated with all of your other data sources. Two, Excel. Excel is this weird tool that seems to never really die. It seems like most people's processes, especially data-related processes, still are somewhat attached to Excel, which ensures that data engineers will often need to come in later on and automate that process, whatever it might be, and move it away from Excel and pulling a lot of reports manually and turning them into some sort of data pipeline to replace that logic. Okay, there's actually even a third point here, which is these tools will still require someone to specialize in them. So although the original work that data engineers might have been doing in the past might disappear or might reduce, there's still gonna be a lot of work in terms of managing these tools and their processes. Similar to the way that cloud computing has reduced the amount of work that your system admin might need to do, but at the end of the day, you're still needing someone to manage your cloud and all of your cloud services. So I really do think we have plenty of runway left. At most, our jobs might change over the next five to 10 years, but I do not think they will disappear. But hopefully that will let us focus on the more important work that data engineers like to do versus just having to constantly add a single column to a table or adding a new data source. Next pro, data engineering is great for introverts. If you watch my video on data engineering realities and expectations, you'll know I talked about the fact that data engineers don't get a lot of the fanfare. And for some people that's very frustrating, but if you prefer staying behind the scenes, this is honestly kind of great. You can focus on your work and spend less time playing politics. It's not to state the fact that extroverts won't enjoy this position. It's more to point out the fact that introverts can spend more time on their work and hopefully a little less time in meetings and all of the various 
politics in a larger company. Finally, you enjoy solving problems. Data engineering involves a lot of performance improvements and optimizations that often require you to take extra time to figure out how can you improve processes, manage your data more effectively, increase ETL performance, and reduce SLA failures. There are lots of little problems that you need to solve every day that often include coding as well as database optimization. And this can be very fun for people who enjoy that problem solving mentality. Now let's talk about why you shouldn't become a data engineer. One, don't do it for the money. I know earlier I said that data engineers make a decent salary, but if you really don't enjoy data engineering work or you find it boring, it's probably not going to work out for you in the long run. I will admit, I can understand why some people might find data engineering work a little more on the boring side. It's mostly focused around doing work like data pipelines and again, not getting a lot of the attention from possibly you know managers. Your work is more focused on kind of being that infrastructure or data layer, and it's not really focused on how can you save the company money. Becoming a data engineer purely for salary probably won't work. And it goes the same with things like software engineering and data science. Purely looking at the salary and going for any of these jobs won't work out if you don't enjoy the work. It can become very repetitive as you do things like data pipelines, migrations, optimizations, and so forth. So don't focus on the salary. Next, data engineering is not data science or machine learning. It's funny, I was on a subreddit where another Redditor was trying to point out the fact that many job descriptions for data engineers often have some sort of machine learning or data science qualification or skill. And it's not to say that if you work at a startup or even some other companies that you won't do some sort of machine learning implementation or data science kind of work. But overall, especially if you work at a larger company, you're likely just to be a data engineer and not have to do too much ML. Can it be useful to know? Sure. Are you guaranteed to do it? Probably not. Again, it's possible. I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but don't count on it. Finally, if you like building things that are tangible, like a website or an application, most likely data engineering is not for you. There are definitely opportunities for data engineers to build things like applications and dashboards, but overall, the core work of a data engineer is really about the data. Again, it depends on the company and the role and also how you define your role. I think there's a lot of opportunities for anyone to kind of redefine roles and start doing the work that they like more. But if you really look at the core of what data engineering is, it's not really software engineering where you're building an application and it's not really data science where you're doing analytics that you then present to your managers and discuss about how you could save the company a million dollars. Personally, I enjoy data engineering. I enjoy the problem solving. I enjoy working with data. I enjoy developing infrastructure components as well as data pipelines. But if I'm being honest, I also love doing end-to-end -end data solutions, which is why I started a consulting company. So I could do a lot more than just doing data pipelines, but I could work on the whole process. So hopefully this answered the question, should you become a data engineer? And now let me ask you a question. What video should I do next? I'm gonna put up a few options here in the corner. Let me know which one you think is best and I'll aim to make it as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.